I want to start to say I'm so happy I'm here. I want to thank Gail and all the others for inviting me. Um, I'm so happy to be here with all these people and the family. And, um, it's a very good experience. And a new one. We cannot repeat it. Yeah. It's only now. No, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, we, uh, no, we have to go. start with the first one. The first one, yeah. <laughs> Where is this thing? Oh, it's over there. Yeah, John, when we met, I, I think I met through text, but then we met in the summer school. And um, you, you were giving a lot of reflections. At the beginning, I thought, what is this man talking about? <laughs> and I, I didn't understand you that well. And later on, I started, it came into me. And you know what I did? Some people, Gail and others, talked about reading your stuff. You know what I do? I found out if I read it out loud, I start to understand it. Really. It's an experience. And now Arthur, my husband, when he comes to my working room and he hears me reading out loud text, he comes in shots are again, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's really true, yeah. Okay, so, um, the first summer school we talked about Beckett. And you directing Beckett and my husband meeting Beckett in Paris. And we had a wonderful conversation about that. And that's when I wanted to prepare our thought of Beckett immediately. I thought we, I should start there. Um, so, this is the title, and we all have the same image of you. Thinking, being responsive, but also waiting for others to talk. Having your hand here, and then you have the response. Okay, so waiting, maybe that title also would have been sufficient for you. Or maybe a waiting, expecting, <laughs> waiting for possibilities. A waiting is central in our lives. Awaiting the other <laughs> with our body and imagination. And you quote Merleau Ponty, you did here. Mm -hmm. I inevitably grasp my body as a spontaneity which teaches me what I could not know in any other way except through it. We are here now. We all are here now. Not in the past, not in the future. Awaiting, listening, feeling, loving, experiencing. In waiting for Godot, Estragon and Vladimir are waiting for Godot to come. Just a small piece of it. This is from the movie that Beckett said, it's okay. <laughs> um, oh no. We go back, yeah. And then you go this. Oh, sorry. You did the right thing. Charming spot. Inspiring prospects. Let's go. Yeah, why not? We really forgot them. Oh, yes. You sure it was here? What? That we were to wait. He said by the tree. Do you see any others? Bodies? Oh, I don't know. I will not. But where are the leaves? They must be dead. <laughs> no more weeping? Oh, perhaps it's not the season. <coughs> What's the name of it? A bush. A shrub. A bush. A sh what are you insinuating? That we come to the wrong place and should be here. He didn't say for sure he'd come. And if he doesn't come? We'll come back tomorrow. And the day after tomorrow. Because I'm so what? The point is, he come. You're merciless. We came here yesterday. Ah, no, there, you're mistaken. And what did we do yesterday? What did we do yesterday? Yes. We... 
Nothing is certain when you're about. In my opinion, we were here. You don't recognize the face? I didn't say that. Well, that makes no difference. All the same. Sure, it was this evening. What? That we were to wait. It's in Saturday. Estragon and Vladimir, we can ask ourselves the questions of Goka. Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Estragon and Vladimir found an answer. Very local answer. That is not the question, what we are doing here. That is the question, and we are blessed in this, that we happen to know the answer. Yes, in this immense confusion, one thing alone is clear. We are waiting for Godo to come. You suppose, John, in your text about this play, that they create Godo because they are waiting. That Godo doesn't exist, that he is an illusion, but we do not know. Another possibility is that the text is strongly connected to autobiographical facts. Although Beckett removed many references to his own life experiences, some are left. For example, hand in hand from the top of the Eiffel Tower, among the first, we were respectable in those days. Now it's too late. They wouldn't even let us up. Can you please show? It's very short. No, it's where he's sitting with, no? One back. <coughs> no, no, it's not there. Hmm. Maybe it's later, maybe I put it later. Yeah, that's it. Where does this Eiffel Tower come from? Beckett was active in the resistance and tells in his journals about two Jews waiting for a guide to help them across the Swiss border, or maybe to the Pyrenees, as is mentioned later in the play. Jews weren't allowed in the Eiffel Tower during the Second World War. So it is possible that Estragon and Vladimir are Jews waiting for a guide Godot, but we do not know <coughs> if they will come. Nobody knows it's an open end. In this time of war and suffering, Beckett had to wait a lot, also searching for food and sleeping in ditches. So what seems absurd can also be connected to real life experiences. 
Beckett could be amused but not impressed by people that wanted to talk with him about the interpretation of his text. What I want to say is in the place they don't need explanation, his response was. And John tells us the same when he writes, instead of seeking to understand what we experience and perceive from the outside in terms of a second timeless ideal world of our own creation, our task becomes that of seeking to understand what we experience and perceive only in terms of what we experience and perceive, to explain the situated and time-bound only by the situated and time-bound, to understand our actual experience world only from within that world. So to understand the place of Beckett from within the place of Beckett. And he wanted to be, his place to be open-ended. The place exists in the body and mind of the audience. A theater performance has as many versions as there are people in the audience. That's where the, th the play exists, in the audience, not on the stage. John realizes this when he writes, I want to bring attention to the movements of feeling that our speech can arouse both in others and in ourselves, and to the power of our different wordings in making, creating, sculpting distinctions, comparisons, connections, and many, many other such unfolding time shapes occurring within us. All plays are alive and open and like all therapy sessions are open-ended. When we want to explain what happened in a session, we often destroy the life in it. I don't know what happened, but I feel something has changed. Can be the uttering of clients and therapists after a meaningful session. John writes, my concern is not to provide other people with the completed ends of my investigation, but with possible beginnings for their own inquiries. Beginnings that are every that in our everyday always are in transition, but which can always be gestures toward, pointed out, or attended to in our writing and speaking and doing, I will say. Talking in the summer school about preparations, beginnings and becomings, John mentioned being poised. Being in the present moment, having the body balanced, and our whole being is then ready to act. When I prepare for a therapy session, or before teaching, or presenting, I always think of John and being poised, being ready for possibilities to come. The next. Only then we can recognize Kairos. The god that John mentioned and who was also the favorite god of my father. Mm -hmm. hmm. Kairos is the Greek god of the fleeting moment, offering a favorable opportunity opposing the fate of man. Such a moment must be grasped by the tuft of hair, you can see it, yeah. on the personified forehead of Kairos. Otherwise, the moment is gone and cannot be recaptured because he has a bolt, is bolt in the backside. So we need to be poised to recognize Kairos, <coughs> opportunity that gives space for new, unexpected possibilities. We said, who did we stole when preparation meets opportunity? We stole that from who? Cartier, Cartier Bessel? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, what was it? That was Peter's. <laughs> Peter, yeah. Peter Rover. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Waiting we for... We stole everything. <laughs> we all stole, we are all thieves. Yeah. yeah. Um, waiting for Kairos, and then waiting is awaiting, is active, is open for beginnings to become. Because only then we can be responsive, be relational, be connected. Connected words of John that touched me. Thus, if I was allowed only one word in which to express what to think to be most important in our lives together, it would be the word responsiveness. 
But if I was allowed to add another word to it, I would say spontaneous responsiveness. Spontaneous. Okay. Um, I'm nearly there. In a later text that I love, mm -hmm. in our meetings we enact what I am calling our relational becomings. The most important of these I think we call love. Lovers can notice in loved ones tendencies that outsiders ignore. Lovers can set a scene that invites a loved one to realize such tendency more fully. This is what's so special about the nature of dialogically structured developmental processes. As Bakhtin <coughs> puts it, such a process always creates something that never existed before, something absolutely new and unrepeatable. And moreover, it always has some relation to value. What is given is completely transformed in what is created. And this could bring, I took a part out, us to an ending of the fragmentation of our relations to each other and the discovery of how much more we can do together than we can do apart. Can you do the text? So John, will you please do a small part piece of Beckett with me? We can do so much more together than I can do apart. Yeah. Shall I come to you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I be here? I can stay standing up. Charming spot. Inspiring prospects. Let's go. We can't. Why not? We are waiting for Godot. Ah. Uh, you're sure it was here? What? That we were to wait. He said by the tree. Do you see any others? What is it, Huck? What is it? I don't know. Willow? Where are the leaves? Must be dead. No more weeping. Or perhaps it's not the season. Looks to me more like a bush. A shrub. A bush. <laughs> what are you insinuating? That we have come to the wrong place? Well, he should be here. He didn't say for sure he'd come. And if he doesn't come? We'll come back tomorrow. And then the day after tomorrow? Possibly. And so on. The point is? Until he comes... You're merciless. We came here yesterday. Ah, no. There you are mistaken. What did we do yesterday? What did we do yesterday? Yes. Why? Nothing is certain when you're about. In my opinion, we were here. You recognize the place? I didn't say that. Well? That makes no difference. All the same? That tree? That walk? You're sure it was this evening? What? That we were to wait. We said, yes, Saturday, I think. You think. Well, shall we go? Yes, let's go. Hmm. Slowly and John. Um, I wonder if it's a moment really for people to move around a bit and have a bit of dialogue and just see how, how things connect, how things are connecting, what's striking you. John, I know no, you're down to speak, so no, do you want to speak no, no, later? No, I, just want, I, I just want to add one phrase from Peter Rover. Um, 
Uh, they're so <laughs> in my face, Junkie. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, this Cartier Bresson, uh, Peter is particularly interested in, in photographs that uh, capture a particular moment, uh, 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 what you might call a mattering moment. Uh, and this Cartier Bresson was asked, how do you manage to capture these kinds of moments? And he said, I choose a particular space. Uh, and then the phrase that uh, grabbed us all was, into this space, life will come. And that was the other Cartier-Bresson quote, that you picture the space and then you wait. And something will happen in that space that's very crucial and very memorable. Yes, that the 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 the, the opportunity <coughs> moment. Yeah. I just wanted to add that from from Peter. You know, he he gave us his uh, terrific movie, uh, but. Uh, Peter is, is one of those uh, we steal from each other. <laughs> At some point, there needs to be a reframe of this word steal. Um, maybe that's one of the things people might want to be reflecting on together. Let's just take five minutes or so just to turn to somebody near you. If you don't want to talk and you need some private headspace or whatever we want to call it here, uh, then do so. Just a few minutes of 